What's the motherfucking deal, y'all? It's the pressure queen, Imani Monroe, and I'm finna do the purse so sweet with Hot Thoughts TV. What's up? About to smoke a purse so sweet with Hot Thoughts TV. Y'all know what the fuck we doing, man. It's Hot Thoughts TV. Niggas hot in the beat, man. I'm smoking a purse so sweet with Hot Thoughts TV. What's going down? What's the motherfucking deal, man? Yeah, welcome to Hot Thoughts TV. Uh, let everybody know who we're here with. Hey man, if y'all don't motherfucking know, it's the motherfucking pressure queen herself, Miss Hard on the hoe. East Side's finest, he might even roll, man. Y'all know the business. All right, and a little bit about you. You say you from that East Side, so what yeah. was that uh, community like for you growing up? She like in the area where I'm from, which is the subdivisions called Pine Trails. Like I feel like it's like middle class. It's not no like. Toe down ass neighborhood. I'm not from like a toe down ass side of town. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. my grandmother had done what the fuck she needed to do to put me in a situation. Cause that's who raised me. My grandmother. She put me in a situation to be in a upscaled enough position. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it wasn't just. I mean, it ain't just hooded out, but it ain't the suburbs. Okay. It's a nice little middle class community. Yeah, so coming up in that area, let's talk like a little bit, like your childhood. What was it like, school or, you know, just hanging out in that, what, what were you into at that time? Um, <laughs> so like, to the eye, it looked really, it's a nice neighborhood, like I said, but like everywhere, it don't matter the demographic, everywhere has the same type of people, crimes and motherfucking gang banging and all that right so in my area the neighborhood that i actually was in it was a lot of bloods it was a lot of my a lot of my friends was gang banging like real real young and my uncle gang banging and my mama was affiliated you know what i'm saying so that's just what i was around you know what i'm saying like i didn't really i was good up until like eighth grade then that's when all that shit kind of like started taking a toll on me. I had tunnel vision up until about eighth grade. After that, I started beating hoes up for everything. I started red flagging. Like, shit, it was just, you know, mm -hmm. it was up from there. Yeah. And my grandma would be like, why the fuck are you like this? I'm like, I don't know, shit, it's just, it, it's just me. Okay, and you said, you know, you start beating hoes up, so if you can't remember, what was that first instance where somebody might have stepped a lot, stepped out of line, and you had to check her? Um, one of my partners. It was this girl. We was cool. We had this little clique. It was in eighth grade. We had this little clique called TYP. So we was throw young players. You know what I'm saying? And so it was three of us. And one of my partners, she was from an area um, on the east side that's like. Hood, 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 though. Like, she from the hood. You know what I'm saying? So, naturally, she was around different type of people, different type of situations. So, she was a lot more, like, hood at a young age than I was at that time. And so, she would really try to be on her bully. We got into it. And, you know, it's po it, it was supposed to be, like, friends getting into it. And it just be on some G shit. Like, man, we ain't talking right now. And we feel like talking again. We'll talk again. Everything pick up from where it left off. But... She tried to be on some bully shit. So, like, for days, she would be, like, talking shit in the bleachers when we waiting on the little bell to ring so we can go to the motherfucking class and shit. We in the gym. She talking her little shit. Talking her little shit. I let her do it for, like, two days. And this this instance is really when I knew, like, yeah, they got me fucked up. Anybody, everybody got me fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I ain't that. I'm this. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, so I got home. On that second, third day, I'm like, tell my little sister, man, I'm going to fight this hoe. Yeah. I'm fighting this hoe when I go to school tomorrow. That's what I'm doing about this shit. Like, I don't know why this shit feel, why this hoe feel the need to keep talking shit to me every day. Like, we ain't talking, we ain't talking, but goddamn. So, yeah. nah, so I'm experiencing my first situation and last of some bully shit, actually. And I'm realizing that shit. So, by day three, I'm like, hoe got me fucked up. I ain't finna get bullied. Yeah. Finna fight this hoe. So I go to school with, I see, I, look, I do weapons. Like, I've been like that since a young age. Like, it just elevated as I got older to the steel. You know what I'm saying? But I went with some handcuffs with some blades on them hoes. I'm like, if she do it, which I knew she was going to do it, it's rhetorical. She do it every morning. It was 
giving her a kick, you know what I'm saying? She do it, I'm whoop her motherfucking ass. She did that shit, turned around the hallway and whooped her motherfucking ass. And it went from there after that, I was, every year I fought. 